marvelous Monday morning. It's a beautiful day. It's not too hot yet, but I can tell you ladies like me who don't like to sweat, we're going to be sweating this afternoon because it's going to be up in the 80s. Are you kidding me? That's okay. That's all right. We can handle it. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. Just stay cool, calm, and collected. Today we are going to stay cool, calm, and collected as we review the weekend because so many good things happened over the weekend. Remember this book I keep telling y'all about? Well, everywhere I look, God keeps showing up. God keeps showing up. I went to a meeting the other day and I came up with another book. And I'm going to read you some of that in just a little bit. You see this? This is because I was in a meeting that I really needed to do. I needed it to come out well, and I needed all answers, all questions to be answered. And the answer was, I was there for a reason. And I looked down and I said, what is that book about? I've been reading it all weekend long. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. We're also going to remind you that the CD, the new, the one, the only one that's gotten finished so far, but it is finished, and if you like Merle Haggard, if you like Charlie Pride, if you like the songs that Mr. Ella J likes, then you will like this CD. If you like the Black Limousine song, you will like this CD, but you will still be waiting and wondering about the one that has Smoky Mountain memories on it. It's not finished yet, and I'm beginning to whine a little bit about it because I'm kind of ready for it. This is a great CD, and remember, you have to chase me down to get it. $10 a piece, slam on the brakes, stop me, blow your horn, say, Sherry, I need a CD, but here it is. We're going to share some of this later in the week. It does have his favorite stuff on it, and I told y'all he ends with a very weird song. And he really does. And he said, you know, I think I'll end all my CDs that way. And I said, that's just weird, Dwight. That's just weird, but he's going to do it anyway because he kind of does things his way. I don't know if y'all have noticed that, but he will be back soon. He said he'll even do the early morning. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the temperatures are getting warmer now. I don't know. I don't know, but he said he'll be back. So get ready for that. Today we're going to share some things with you that happened over the weekend. And one of the things that happened this weekend is a fishing event that my sweet son-in-law has been doing for many, many years. He and his brother Donnie have been taking special need children and, and often young adults on a fishing trip. These kids have never been on a boat, never fished, never ever picked up a rod and reel and got this huge catfish on it. And Lonnie and Donnie have been involved in this for years. It is probably out of all the tournaments they win and all the things that they do, this is probably their favorite fishing trip ever. And we're going to share some of those photos today. We're also going to share something very, very special that happened in Ball Ground this weekend. Miss Jenny Byers was honored, as she should be, as the bestest. She is the Princess Belle of Ball Ground, and we know and love her. There's nothing in Ball Ground that Jenny's hands haven't touched and been involved in and helped somebody do something. So a scholarship program was created in her honor, and I think that is the coolest thing ever because she is all about teaching and learning and being there and giving back. So it was wonderful to be sitting next to her as this happened. She didn't know it was going to be her. It was kind of a shocker, a big surprise. And she was like, oh. and when they told the year that she joined the club, then she knew it was her. So it's pretty cool. And again, another young man was honored this week. And y'all, you love him. You fell in love with Nathan Johnson as he visited with me last week as he was preparing to leave for the FFA convention. He went to the convention. The convention went very, very well for that young man. And he left with this award and this award and this award and this award. And we're going to share those photos with you. We have lots and lots of awards. But my favorite thing for the weekend is I am blessed to be part of the, um, what, what is that? Preserving the past, embracing the future. There's going to be some property preserved as the house completely gets a gut job in a, a total remodel. So I did a video to show y'all as it was. Well, I'm so glad I got it done on Friday because when I walked in there Saturday morning, I didn't even recognize the place. These guys had gone to work fast and furious. They make the movie look like an amateur. So, so you're going to get to see a little bit of that. 
and I'm going to tell you a little story about something that's going to happen in ball ground. Can't tell you all the details yet because it hasn't, oh, it hasn't been officially announced. But we are going to get the coolest place in ball ground for children to learn about agriculture. And I said it's so cool that it comes right on the heels of Nathan being with us because Nathan's life has been growing plants and learning about animals and learning to be a farmer. And now there's going to be an opportunity for children in ball ground to learn to farm, to learn to care for animals, and to learn to watch things grow. I think that is the coolest thing ever because when you plant a seed and then all of a sudden you go back and seven to ten days later there's this little thing coming out of the ground. Well, what happened? What made it happen? Well, God made it happen. His sun, his soil, his water. That's what made it happen. And I think that's the coolest thing about this little farm. And y'all, I'm so excited. I can't wait. It is so close to town. It is going to be so beautiful. And you, maybe, maybe it will be open for fall. They're working very, very fast. And I hope that it will be open this fall. And if not, then it'll be next spring. But it's really exciting because it is something that children can get involved in. It's going to be playing in the dirt again. <laughs> and your kids will be able to play in the dirt. So we're going to share the photos from this weekend with you. So let's start with the fishing experience. And this is Lonnie and Donnie. I think they've done this now 18 years. And the first year they did it, Lonnie came home and he couldn't even tell us about it for crying. And he just kept saying, you just wouldn't believe these, the looks on these kids' faces when they catch their first fish. And um, they have done some kids that were terminally ill that didn't live maybe two or three weeks after the event. They have done some children that are autistic and didn't really get the concept of where that fish came from. And then they talk to them and teach them. It's just absolutely amazing. But they give back, they give back, they give back. And when they first got involved in it, they were traveling all the way to Chicago area to do this. And now they do it a little bit closer to home. So it's really, really awesome. But this is about giving back. And that's what our community is about. It's about giving back. It's about the giving to those who, who are less fortunate than you. And we do it all the time. We see it all the time. And we so see somebody who needs something more than we do. And we have the ability to share. So that's one of the coolest things. But when you look at these children, maybe one's a ca cancer patient. Maybe one of them has special needs. Maybe one of them um, has lost their sight. There's so many different special needs children, and it's all about giving back. So, and when these kids catch these fishes, these, the, the fishing rods that they gave away this year, I think took them over 600 that they have given to children, and they raise the money, their church helps raise the money, and they make sure that every kid leaves there with a fishing rod, so it's pretty cool, pretty cool. And again, these are world-class fishermen who are members of the Fishing Hall of Fame. And instead of being out catching one of those fish that's going to pay them $5,000, they're out helping other people. So how cool is that? How cool is that? And they do love it. They come home and there's stories about this. They talk about their wins very little, but they talk about this experience all the time and they try to share it with everybody. Now this is our boy. Pickens County's own Nathan Johnson went to FFA and he won every award you can imagine. And he left there with his arms full of plaques and, and certificates and things and trophies. He nailed it. He did so well on stage. He was a little bit nervous and he had never done, he had done live TV with me before, but very short interviews. And last week we wanted to prepare him for the state championship. So we brought him out here and did live TV with him. And he did amazing. He was so good. and. Uh, a couple of times he'd say, oh, I'm a little bit nervous, you know, but he did great. He did amazing. And so congratulations to Nathan. And without his parents and their guidance, he could never have accomplished what he does because his parents make sure that these kids are farming and learning agriculture and learning to make a difference in somebody else's life. You talk about a sweet kid. That is one sweet kid, and uh, I'm so proud of him. And, and I would love if he can get involved with the little farm that's going to happen down in Ball Ground. I think it would be so cool for him to encourage kids to get involved in FFA because he joined in the sixth grade, and it was one of his favorite, absolute favorite things that he did all through school. And again, he was awarded. He was congratulated by so many people. And uh, we're so very, very proud of him. And I just said, tickles me to death to see that kid. Now there is our Princess Belle, Miss Jenny, and her sister, Queen Belle, Miss Paula. 
This is at the Garden Club. Jenny had no idea that she was going to be honored. And was she honored? She was really honored. She joined the Garden Club in 1969, has been president twice, and is always giving back. Always giving back. And that's what she does. And that's part of the Garden Club. You know, there are many things down there planted in memory and in honor of somebody else. And all of this was through Jenny's leadership. And when the Botanical Garden came to be, that was part of Jenny's leadership. And it just has been amazing. This is eight years of the Botanical Garden and so many visitors, so many people, and so many people volunteering to help. The plant sale is gonna be May the 11th. And we wanna invite you to come out, get there early because there will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plants for sale. Anything you can imagine will be there and great prices. There will also be some baskets that'll be raffled off and we've got some really neat baskets that have some tickets to some concerts up in Hiawassee. They have tickets in those baskets so you'll want to bid on those. And the ticket value is $70 and then I stashed the basket <laughs> full of other stuff. Now here's her award so let's go. Let's look at this. It would be funny, but that was like ghostly. <laughs> that was, I don't know what happened, but it was in slow motion. So we're going to skip that over, but I can guarantee you everybody applauded. She got a standing ovation, as she should have. She deserves it. And again, she has been in the Garden Club since 1969 and past president twice. I don't think she will be president again. I think she said, I have paid my dues, done my duty to God and country. But it's so cool to see the Garden Club growing and growing and growing. Now, we're going to take you to a house. If you've been through Ball Ground on Jordan Road or Old Dawsonville Road, you've seen this house for many, many years as it looked. Well, I want you to see as it looks because it will never look like this again. It is going to look like a white farmhouse. I love this builder. He is amazing. He has built so many wonderful houses in downtown Ball Ground. And Josh, he, he is just He's, he's sort of a visualist, but he's a workaholic too. And he sees something and he doesn't wait. He doesn't think, he doesn't plan. He's got it in his mind, he's gone, he's done, it's over. You're like, holy cow, this man is amazing. So he told me what he was gonna do to this house. And I said, okay, can I video it before and after and in the transition? He said, yes. So it's really gonna be exciting. And as this turns into a miniature farmhouse, now when you look at this, all of that's gone now. The fireplace is gone now. In one day, they destroyed all the interior and it just blew my mind. I was like, wow, everything in there was I think the 70s and 80s. And um, his crew went in and they meticulously took down things. They are trying to repurpose the cabinets. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with them, but they're repurposing the cabinets and totally redesigning the house. It was built onto, I think at a couple of different stages, and at one point, the den was actually a back patio, so when they jerked up the carpet, it was just a concrete pad, and so I think they're gonna make a big back porch back there. But it's gonna be look like, look like a country farmhouse, and that's gonna be really, really cool. So it's exciting, it is a, a cool house with a lot of history, and um, I cannot wait to see this farm come to be. This farm will be a teaching, a, a teaching place with a purpose for children, with a purpose for helping 
not many kids have ever planted a garden. Not many kids have ever been there and watched something pop up from the soil. One of the things that you watch and you wait and you wait and you wait is okra and you get kind of impatient waiting on okra to come up, but other things come up very quickly. And um, the driveway will be changed, everything's gonna be changed. But it will be an amazing, amazing mini farm and um, it's very exciting because it's very close to downtown and it's just gonna be a place of peace, a place for children to learn about animals, to learn about, um, you know, you think about this. We see flowers growing and Nathan has learned this with his garden because he has his greenhouses. Well, Josh's wife has greenhouses and she, one of them's got the greenest thumb in the world because they grow some amazing stuff. I'm not sure which one of them it is, but she's a teacher and I think it was maybe her idea to help with this. It's gonna be so cool that kids can learn that if you sit down to eat, you can produce what's on your table. You can produce your tomatoes, you can produce your okra, you can produce your cucumbers. And it's very simple to just learn how to garden. You can have a mini garden, you can have a, a above ground, you know, the what do they call the box gardens. Um, you can have a big garden, you can have one row that you put several different things in. And I think that's great that they've decided to do that. One of the things they're gonna plant is a lot of sunflowers. And the sunflowers will be a beautiful place for you to take your photos. So that's gonna be really, really cool. And uh, he has just at six acres there. And to me, it is, is the best use of this land. It is gonna be so amazing to see this process come together and to see the change from what this was from a 70s and 80s house. It actually started in the 40s. The, the original structure was built in, I think, 1948 and changed as it grew and as ownership changed. But once upon a time, there was a, I think a, a small uh, vineyard there, a grapevine. Haven't been able to find that, but it would be so cool to find anything original that was once there and to, uh, to continue to grow that, whether it be iris or peony or whatever, any of the old flowers, it would be neat if they would come back up. But uh, it's, it is going to be, it is going to be fantastic. And uh, I'm so glad that he had this vision. He said he'd been thinking about it a long time and it would kind of be his retirement and uh, they would enjoy this and, and his children will have a way to learn about the soil and his wife can teach other children about it. So I think it's just a, it's a great experience for kids. And I wanted to show everything as he redesigns because he said the whole configuration is going to be different. And um, I don't know where he got the idea to do it, but great idea, great plan. And it's exciting. It's gonna be really, really exciting. And hopefully part of the farm will be ready to open this fall if everything goes as planned. No, no promises, but if everything goes as planned, then that's what will happen. We're gonna take a commercial break. When we come back, I have something very special. We've shared this for a long time. But last night I was watching ETC and um, we had planned for Caitlin Berger to be with us. Today is my grandmother's birthday and it's Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s birthday. And uh, I always laughed because I said, how could those two people have birthdays the same day? My granny was just easy going and just get me another dip of snuff and sit on the porch and rock and Dale Earnhardt was wide open. I'm kind of a combination of the two of them. I'm wide open most of the time and I'm never sitting on the porch dipping the snuff, but I am sitting on the porch every once in a while. So happy birthday in heaven to our, the greatest driver ever. And he truly is the greatest NASCAR driver ever, Dale Earnhardt Sr. So happy, happy heavenly birthday. And to my granny, Lord have mercy, I'm so proud that I am part of you. I'm so proud of that. We're gonna take a commercial and when we come back, we're gonna honor a very special group of women. Um, Selena went to be with the Lord. Her children will face Mother's Day without her. Her grandchildren will face Mother's Day without her. But there's not one doubt in my mind that she left this earth with no doubt to them how much she loved them. I was thinking about her funeral last night. And as I sat in the funeral home and, and was watching and listening, I never saw it ending the way it ended, and she sang herself into heaven. You talk about an experience. She knew where she was going, she knew why she was going there, and she knew what it takes for each of us to get there. And I wanna read something to y'all. We're gonna show a picture of this book that I found this weekend. And I hope that you will go by this. Um, Shelley Bishop is at Lane Bishop 
surveyors up in Fannin County. She did this book and she did it as a self-help and also to raise awareness and to raise some money for a program that she has up in the Copper Hill area. It is to help women who need to get back on their feet after possibly a drug addiction or alcoholism to have a place to refresh, revitalize, and change their life. So this is it. And uh, if you, Trace, if you can pull that picture of this book up, I would love to share. I would love for y'all to go by and pick up a copy of this. And again, it's $10. It's at Lane Bishop and um, Surveyors. You know them, you love them. Okay, a lot of my friends have said, why is this happening to me? And I was reading something this weekend from Layla and, and I was thinking about why is she having to face this now? And I, I want her and everybody else who thinks, why is it just happening to me? No, it's just not happening to you. The devil comes to torment you and when you allow him in, he will do just that. He is a bully and he will push his way in any way that he can. When he finds an open door, he barrels through it. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He stands at the door and knocks. Every trial that you have been through has a purpose. Everything that was meant for evil, God can use it for good. That very thing that you went through, it was so horrible that you thought it would kill you, but it didn't. The enemy tried, but he did not succeed. Let that very thing that was meant to destroy you strengthen you, empower you, and then you can testify to others about the goodness of God through the battles and the storms. Your overcoming testimony will bring hope and healing to others. And that goes out to a couple of special women, Cindy and Talayla, and to anybody who is facing something this week that you think, Lord, why are you doing this to me? Mother's Day's coming and my kids don't speak to me and my kids never call me and my kids don't do this and my kids are doing drugs and my kids are doing... Hang tight, hold fast, and, and remember, I'll, I'll never forget the day that I said, Lord, I can't handle it anymore. It's yours. And things turned around. You have to let him handle it. We're not strong enough. We're not smart enough. We can't do it without him. And so pick up a copy of this book. And um, I started reading it from the very middle, which is really weird. But I opened it to this chapter, and it was uh, chapter, it was day 23 of this 40-day journey. And it was so weird because when I opened it, I said, now why, Lord, did I open to that? But I, I guess I know. So I want you to pick this up again. It's at Lane Bishop. And while you're up there, if you're smart, you'll run across the street to Circle J and eat lunch because they have a great lunch. So again, we're going to share that. We're going to go to a commercial break. And when we come back, it's Angel Spirit time. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Aw, oh, Daddy. <laughs> I've grown up, grown up, up in every way, in every way, care and take care of you. I've grown up and I know you're there. I've grown up and you know I care. Cause it's you and me and me and me and you. And you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you.
city stuff Don't you think it's time to go Or black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the hell Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Angie wrote that song about two or three weeks ago. We're getting ready to put that on a uh, CD, we hope. Lord William, we're going to try to, we've got that, and she's got another brand new song she's wrote. We're going to try to put both of those on this project. We've got one that we do. I hope this song touches your heart. We, uh, we go to a lot of homecomings, and uh, this is one that they always request. It's called Family Chain.
share with you for just a few minutes, if I can. My grandfather lived to be 96 years old. And he and my grandmother had been married over 70 years when he passed away. And my grandmother always said that, that he needed her to take care of him. And he always said that she needed him to take care of her. But my grandmother passed away within six months of my grandfather's passing. And they really needed each other. And when one of them was gone, the other had no purpose to be here anymore. And that song is very special to me. And I hope it was a blessing to you. Thank you. Y'all pray for us. You know, I guess uh, it's kind of strange to see somebody uh, shed a tear, but uh, that's just the way we are. We just have to go the way the Lord leads us, and uh, y'all pray for us. Thank y'all for all your support. You've been so good to us. Thank you. 
you ready? Now we're ready. Listen to a story How Jesus died for me On an old rugged cross of Calvary And my Jesus will welcome me home I've come too far to turn back Heaven's gate I now can see Loved ones there away for me Beyond the give mama a big hand here. We're so proud she could be here with us tonight. It's been a touch and go situation, but I tell you what, y'all, as she goes off stage for a few minutes, I'm going to have a young lady come out that I was just talking about. Leah, come on out and join us. This is Leah Senior. She's from right here in Jasper, Georgia. She comes from a family with some incredible talent. Just to give you a little background on her, she has a great aunt that's in her 90s that plays piano and is an incredible musician from what I'm told. She has a sister who is a performer, entertainer, that has sang at Dollywood for a number of years, Kaylee, who just got married. And let me think. Who? Oh, Bill Higgins. I mean, you know, he's the co-host of that show. Uh, I guess his name's Bill Senior. He sings with that other group, uh, that wonderfully talented group, First Mountain City Quartet. And we're so honored to have a couple of you guys here tonight. So you guys just bundle, uh, bear with us through the nerves. And I hope you enjoy her voice as much as I do. She has worked so hard to bail us out in a time of need and has a voice that needs to be heard. So. This is her third singing with us. Ever. Practice. Practice. <laughs> So y'all enjoy. I know your life on earth was trouble, and only you could know the pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil. You're no stranger to the rain. 
So go rest high on that mountain. Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and shout love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cry the day you left us. We gathered round your grave to grieve. I wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. So go rest high. So go to heaven and shout love for the Father and the Son. See what I mean, guys? She got it. She I don't know it. if I like this or not. That makes me the oldest one up here now. <laughs> This next song is going to feature her just a little bit, and we hope you enjoy it. It's a good old southern gospel hymnal out of our book, and it's called Holy Angels. Let's go. 
What do you think, guys? Give her up another big hand. That was awesome. Well, just a little bit about us. You, most of you probably know us all. Um, on my far left is my Aunt Diane Green. And next to me is my mother, Mildred Sewell. And I'm Selena Fields. And uh, quite honored tonight to have my twin girls here with us. So glad they're here. My brother, thank you for being here. Um, I guess our next song is going to be Right on Time. <laughs> everything, but he'll be right on time, right on time. I just need to say a word, I guess. I've been sick so long, and it is just such a joy. I'm not at a good range of voice and all, but it is a joy to be standing right here doing what I'm trying to do right now. I want to thank everybody that has uttered a prayer for me, and I need your continued prayers, needless to say, but thank God I'm on the road to getting better, I think. And while we're at it, I know that this is in some relation to Hans. We're trying our best to uplift that young man. He has become so much a part of my life every day. I just can't wait to hear Sherry tell me how he is every morning. And I want him to know if this, if this goes to him, we are with you, Hans. You keep the faith, and we will too. Is there hope for tomorrow? 
The only thing I got to say about that, thank you so much. But Scott was talking about you just have to do. I wanted y'all to see it, and I didn't know how it was going to affect me. But wow, to see my friends that are gone on. So many people in that audience are gone from us now, but they are in the presence of God. Would we bring them back? Never, 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 never. Okay, Sherry, get it together. <laughs> Did not know that was going to do that, but wow. If we'd have done it much longer, I'd have, I'd have never been able to handle this. Today, at 4 o'clock at Pickens, the uh, field, the Dunn Field down at Pickens High School, Hebron Christian and Pickens Ball Team are going to go at it for one or two games, depending on who wins. But this is the state championship progression as Pickens is still in the running. So please, if you like baseball, Get your kids together and go down to the Pickens Field today at 4 o'clock and, and cheer on and support the Dragons. There you go. And also, this is the National Day of Prayer Week. And I'm going to be there on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to be filming a lot of the stuff that's going to be happening that day. And we want to share it with you all. But we want you to be a part of National Day of Prayer. You're welcome to come down to the Wheeler House and to pray with the group that will be there. I hope we will have 100 or more. And I hope that we can make a difference in this world we are living in because I watched a bunch of stuff this weekend that I was just like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We have people on campuses in the United States of America screaming death to America. We have got to pray these crazy people out of here. We have got to save our country. And the only way I know to save our country is to save our Christian beliefs, our Christian way of life, and our conservative way of life, we have got to stop the madness. So if you've never prayed before on National Day of Prayer, this is the year that we better be praying for America or America as we love her will be gone because they are letting people nuts, I'll just say it, nuts, who are out there on campuses doing crazy things, living in tents on a campus that is funded by a bunch of liberal dollars going to them. There ought to be a law against this mess that is going on in America. So pray, pray, pray. National Day of Prayer has never been more important than it is this week, this day in America. We do not deserve to hear a chant, Death to America. America is filled with soldiers who went to war for us, who came home, many of them shattered and hurt, and um, things that we'll, they'll never recover from. We owe them a debt of gratitude. We do not need to see them sitting at home watching nuts sit on campuses that are funded by a bunch of liberal maniacs. And it just, it makes me so mad I could just about choke. So this Thursday, 9 a.m., come and be with us at the Wheeler House for a National Day of Prayer. I hope it's the strongest day of prayer we have ever seen, and I hope the crowds are bigger and better than ever. And I love the idea that in New York, people got together, Jewish, Christian, everybody got together and marched for goodness, for goodness, as these campuses are being turned over to a bunch of nuts, just a bunch of nuts. And I know 99% of my viewers agree with me, and there's about 1% of y'all that don't. I hate it. I just hate it. <laughs> I hate it. But... We've gone through some mess. Now, we're going to leave you today with my favorite Dwight Sanford song. It's called Mountain Life. And if you don't live this mountain life and you aren't blessed enough with it, then you need to get on up here and be a part of us. So here we go, Mountain Life by Mr. Ella J. Black bears climbing 
waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck You'll love how we live here in these mountains Everything is gonna be alright Notley down to Carter's Lake All oh, the memories to make So much here for all to see A land that is so dear to me Welcome home to all your dreams Hot rod boards and mountain streams Oh